is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. There we go. Ready to go. Ready to talk to Manny Navarro on a light canes. We I got to tell you some Manny. Uh, normally you pump out like five stories a day. You're having trouble pumping out five stories a day right now, aren't you? It's the summertime, man. And uh, you know I I flew out to Vegas uh, Wednesday. It took me nine hours to get out here between delays and <laughs> cancellations and all kinds oh, of different things. But uh, I got in here late Wednesday night, and then I spent all day yesterday kind of just hanging out with. Uh, some of the best players, high school players in the country, that are here to compete in this uh, overtime seven-on-seven seven thing. So, uh, so yeah, n nothing, uh, nothing fresh. But it, it, you know, it's a time of year where y you you can spend a little time, you know, talking to people, just sort of uh, working your sources and, and having interesting conversations. And I had a lot of them here in the last twenty-four hours, just being around some of these agents that are representing these kids, and and really just a lot of the the elite players themselves to ask them. You know, from a Miami perspective, what they think of the Hurricanes and then to see who's really making an impact, you know, in terms of coaches and, and you know, schools and you know, what kind of conversations are being had regarding NIL and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, enlightening to be out here. This is the part of the job I enjoy for the athletic when you when you can go out and, and just talk to a lot of people. Well, so what'd you pick up from uh, from the workouts? Uh, any any kind of nuggets Some players interested in Miami? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of interest in Miami um, and Mario Cristobal and what he's going to do there. But as you and I have spoken about in the past when, we, when we've discussed recruiting, I think a lot of it still remains, hey, um, let's see what Miami does. They're in the game, <clears throat> I think, for a lot of kids uh, who, who are interested, right? And they, and they see that, you know, the school is spending a lot of money on resources. They see that, uh, you know, things are sort of changing from, from what it was uh, under Manny Diaz. Um, but I also think it, it, it's still a prove it league and, uh, for, for these kids, right? Like prove, prove that you can win consistently. And so I think year one, uh, for Mario is going to be very important. And, and I think, uh, even some of the commitments that he has, you know, some of the kids that, uh, the, the, you know, the, the Washington twins that are, that are Bobby and Robbie Washington that are out here playing as well with the Miami Immortals. Um, you know, they got a lot of schools coming after them, um, uh, they're gonna they're gonna visit Alabama. There's Utah. There's a bunch of different programs that that are interested in the kids that Miami has committed right now. And and I think a lot of them want to see. Hey, you know what, Coach Cristobal saying all this is gonna change, but I want to see Miami win. So um, I think this is one of those years where Miami's recruiting class may not be ranked very high until the end, depending on how the how the season goes, and uh, you know which kids they can maybe steal at the last minute. You know, kind of get in get in on um, in, in November and December when they've proven, hey, you know what? We, we just went 10-2 and two and played for the ACC championship. Believe in us. This is real. How much have the schemes changed? The offensive and defensive schemes for, for Miami? I mean, I think, look, I, I had a couple of high-profile wide receivers ask me, you know, is Mario going to throw the ball as much as Miami has in the past? Miami had the 10th-ranked passing offense. Um, and some did, of the kids, did he watch? Did he watch Oregon on the West Coast? Yeah, I mean that's twelve. That, that's the whole. <laughs> that's the whole thing. But it's but that's the but that's the unknown. The unknown is you've got Tyler Van Dyke, right? And so how how much passing are they going to continue to do? But oh, they'll, they'll, pass, of, they'll, pa they'll pass. But dude, they're going to be more responsible because he knows if you can punish them with the run, you'll make Tyler even better now. That's kind of the whole thing, bro. You want Tua to succeed? Run the damn ball, man, because it right. makes you a much better offense when you can get the, the four yards by punching somebody in the mouth than forcing your quarterback on a third and four to always make the key play because, mm -hmm. as you know, he's going to fail because that's just the way the numbers are. But right. if you've got a dominant line, more often than not, you're going to make that third and two and third and four and third and five because you're going to be able to punch people in the mouth and move that line. Uh, I, there's no doubt in my mind. He had a Justin Herbert. Look at Justin Herbert with the Chargers and look mm -hmm. at him with, with, the, with, the, with the Ducks. It's two different guys. That's why I wasn't much of a Justin Herbert guy because I never really saw him air it out in a way where he was leading the team and winning in big moments. I saw him using his legs more than anything else at times. No, listen. It's crazy. That's 
that that's that's to win and mario has to do what he has to win ultimately right that's what he's going to do on saturdays he's, he's going to seek the balance but i'm talking about living in this world with these elite recruits and the kind of conversations that they have about where they want to go to school and what and what kind of offenses they want to play in and what kind of uh you know success do you have in in, in sending guys to the league and that's why I say, you know, I know Mario's a great recruiter, and I think he's gonna he did a he did a phenomenal job taking over from Manny Diaz. They wouldn't have had they wouldn't have finished in the top 16 uh if if it wasn't for for what Mario did last year. But again, I think for, for Miami fans who think, oh, he's just gonna come in here and all of a sudden all the best players in the country are gonna want to start to come to Miami. Yes, you have a better coach, you have uh, an NIL system that's successful, but you need the results. You need all three to really change the tide here. And all Miami has done is put themselves in a better position to succeed. Now, whether or not you, you're going to have a great recruiting class, I, I just from from having so many conversations yesterday with a lot of people, Miami wouldn't even be in the game right now for a lot of kids if Manny Diaz was still coach. Like it, it, it would like I just imagine there's no NIL and Manny Diaz is still coach. You you wouldn't even that you wouldn't even be in the conversation. Miami would be an afterthought. They would have probably one of the worst recruiting classes. Um this coming season if Manny Diaz was still coach. So all you've done is rectify the situation in the sense that you, you've given yourself a chance now to be in the ball game for some of these elite recruits. But if you're going to win them over, you got to win on the field and you got to do it with a little bit of style for some of these kids, for some of these elite top 100, top 200 prospects uh, that are in those rankings. And I know Miami fans care about that, right? As much as they say, yeah, we'll take the two-star Ed Reed uh, it's a lot harder to find those guys now. Basically, oh, yeah. the, best, the yes. best of the best are the kids that are the top 200, 300 recruits. And that's Although they had, Alabama they had... and... Go ahead. No, I was going to say, that's who Alabama and Ohio State and Georgia get every year. They get the top 200 recruits. Uh, Miami's, you know, every now and then they'll get four, five, maybe six, you know, top 200 players. But, you know, that's not nearly enough. To, to 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 be the kind of program they want to be. So you you have to hit high on these elite recruits. And that's Mario had success with that at Oregon. And that's why they won. Yeah. And listen, it's not like they didn't air it out here when he when they were successful, but mm -hmm. they always ran the ball too at the same time. And I think right. ultimately and it's like Alabama. Mm -hmm. They'll air it out too, but you got to be able to run the ball. And I think he's going to do the same thing that you see in Alabama. Will there be games that you, you have an, a luxury of airing it out a little bit more? Probably. But mm -hmm. on those tougher games, you're going to want to make sure you can run the ball, control the clock, limit the turnovers, all those kind of things, because by putting it in the air, you're putting everybody, you know, putting the ball more at risk. So I think that's going to end up happening. By the way, while you were out west, Cam Newton was there too with yeah. his group. Yeah, they're out here. Uh, they're one of the seventeen teams. Uh, he was a part of the uh, of building this OT seven. They're they're trying to get seven on seven football to really take off mm -hmm. uh, from from a marketing and television perspective. Uh, this this overtime group has poured in a lot of money. Uh, they've got announcers out there on the field. I mean, this is like un unlike any other seven on seven event that I've attended. It looks like a professionally televised sort of um, thing, and and. You know, they want to see what they can do with this. They want to see how much money it can create um, and how entertaining seven on seven football. And I know you know how this the trickle down effect, right? It always sort of starts at the high school level, and then it goes up to college. And then all of a sudden the, the, the pros are copying the college. I wonder at what point we get to a professional seven on seven league, you know. Mm. Uh, well, but it won't be the players you see in the NFL. Right, but the same way we saw the 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 NBA, right? The, the older right. guys in the NBA, I think, I think we could potentially see – some you know uh former players or, or guys that are no longer in the league that are still young that mm -hmm. want to play maybe that were big college stars that maybe that ends up being more successful and probably less expensive than leagues like the xfl and, and things of that nature but will people right. watch that'll be the question so so that that's that's what i was going to ask you because here's a guy that no longer is making the big money mm -hmm. uh he's going to make backup money at best if he does um, he's probably had to curtail his uh, wardrobe. Uh, and so I'm wondering, he's like putting all this money into this, and I'm wondering where's the money going to come back? And now you're telling me they're trying to seek television deals and all that kind of stuff. Now I see what they're trying to do, but mm -hmm. boy, that's a hell of a risk on his part considering 
he doesn't have the kind of flow he used to have coming in, you know, uh, uh, before. Well, he's so. one. I think he's more of a, of a partner in this than, than a driving force. He's more of a guy who um, is attaching his name to it early on, you know, as, as they sort of build this thing. Um, there's other investors and other millionaires and people that are involved in this in this sort of venture. But um, I think, you know, it's like anything new, right? You you want to see where it can go. And, and this first trial run with all of these athletes that are here, um, you know, I, there's different demographics, too. Old. I mean, they feel like the under the 35 and under crowd um, may not want to see it live. They may prefer to watch it in a in a storytelling slow, you know, slow mo type of uh, deal where where where. You know, there's a different way to sort of cover this and, and to and to broadcast this. So we'll see. Um, but it'll be interesting to watch. I, it, it, was, it was definitely I'm definitely happy I'm out here because it's a very interesting time in, in high school and college sports and and the way all of this is changing with the Internet and everything else. In and out Burger. Yeah, I was hanging out with the South Florida Express yesterday and, and Brett Getz, who's a wonderful guy. Uh, he was in the car with me out in L.A. when I had you on the on the phone with the. Uh, <laughs> with Brandon and his, and his parents, um, he went out and he got, a I don't know, like 30 burgers to bring it back to the kids. And he threw one on my lap. He said, here. So, yes, I've already had the, uh, the burger All within, right, within 24 hours of landing. Uh, but by the way, that, that wasn't your first, right? You've had. No, a no. I've been out to L.A. plenty and, and Texas okay. where they have some. And yeah, it was good stuff. And you know what's also good at 2511 South University Drive, Canesware, baby. They are loaded with anything and everything with the U. They've got so many cool items there, lights for your bar that have the UM logo. They've got the latest sneakers. They've got all kinds of sandals. So if you need, a, need some sandals for the beach, like we have behind us right here at Flagler Beach, you can get that. Towels, you name it, anything. They've got Dolphins, Marlins, Panthers, Inter-Miami, Florida Panthers, all kinds of stuff, man. So get on down to 2511 South University Drive. Go to canesware.com. All orders over $99, free shipping. So take advantage there. What are you working on over at The Athletic, my friend, so they can uh, check it out? Yeah, well, I'm hoping to sit down with Jaden Rashada. He's uh, one of the elite quarterbacks in the country, a five-star kid out of uh, California. Uh, you know, I'm going to sit down and talk to him. He's going to be making an announcement, uh, I think, this coming week. Um, I know the Gators are in it. I know Texas A&M is in it. Um, the Hurricanes, he's been down there multiple times. So I'm going to I'm going to sit down and see, you know, what kind of shot the Hurricanes honestly have. And then, you know, write about him, you know, and why he's, he's somebody a lot of coaches and a lot of people in the industry think that's going to be really special in college and potentially the pros. So uh, and, and then uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, recruiting type stuff that's going to come out of this, including some some write ups on as I, what you and I just talked about, which is the seven on seven and, and the future. And can this be a televised sort of sport that, that makes money? Um, so there'll be a lot of stories, the, the Bobby Washington and Robbie Washington twins, the two Miami commitments. I finally got a chance to caught up with catch up with them. And, uh, so a lot of recruiting coverage and then the state of the program for UCF, I'm going to be writing about them. So I, I got a lot of different things that I'm working on from a Miami level. It's one of those times where, uh, you know, the athletic gets their bang for their buck. They get me to work on a couple of different teams, not just Miami. I like it. Hey man, you need a little variety. There's nothing wrong. Yeah, you don't. With a, with a little variety. You know what I'm saying? You don't always have to have chocolate ice cream. You can get some cookies and cream every once in a while. Right, Mix exactly. it up a little bit there. <laughs> what happened? Oh, oh, you want Neapolitan? Okay. Uh, you, yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> a terrible idea on your part. Anyways, all right. Uh, it, it was such a great day until that right there. I mean, Jesus, Neapolitan. That is just terrible. All right. Now, follow him on Twitter at Manny underscore Navarro. Catch his work there at The Athletic, as always, getting it done. Manny, appreciate you, my brother. Have a great weekend, man. We'll catch up next week. All right, man. Talk to you. See you. Got it. There you go. The great Manny Navarro.